All right, guys, hello and welcome to level 7 of Tomb Raider, Palace Midas. I am playing in the Croft Engine by Sturendorf with HD Textures by Matthew Hill. So, Midas was a king in Phrygia with whom many myths have become associated. None more famous, of course, than the one from Greek mythology in which everything that he touched turned to pure gold, hence the term Midas Touch. And it seems that we have arrived at his palace, so let's get our bearings and start taking a look around the level. Gonna start with this section here on the left. Okay, so we've got a gated garden with lots and lots of primates. We'll have to come back though. According to the myth, Midas was granted this special power by Dionysus as a reward for finding and being hospitable to Dionysus' old schoolmaster and foster father, Silenus the Seder, who had gone missing after drunkenly wandering off and was found in Midas' rose garden. Got a warm welcome to the palace there from one of the apes. Some kind of collapsed antechamber with two high pillars that are far too far too tall for Lara to climb. Okay, we've got a little back door here. Let's check it out. A stunningly beautiful Parthenon or Acropolis looking structure. That must have been on the same grounds as the palace proper. And doors that welcome us inside of their own accord, apparently. Alright, we've unlocked the door to the garden, which means we've probably let out the entire gorilla population of Greece. Because there is so many, might as well take our brand new magnums for a spin, let me say. They gotta be making their way to us. I can definitely hear them. Great. Took a little bit of a wallop there. Alright, let's head to the garden. And still more. Alrighty. Now this garden, very unusual, right? Way underneath the ground you know, deeper even than the Colosseum maybe, or at least adjacent to it on the same grounds. This is likely the Garden of Midas. According to Herodotus, Midas, son of Gordius, had a wild rose garden at the foot of Mount Bermion, where wild roses bearing 60 blossoms of surpassing fragrance blossomed. In some stories, the satyr Silenus, mentor of the god Dionysus, was found passed out here after a drunken wander. Clearly, the developers of Core Design were inspired by this myth for this lovely locale. Now, if we look closely, we can see there's a medipack and a path above. 
When Midas returned Silenus to Dionysus after 10 days of hospitality and care, Dionysus rewarded Midas with whatever he wished for, and Midas asked for the power to change anything he touched into gold. His wish was granted. Alright, we have what once was an enormous statue. But there's no way that we can interact with it. At least, not yet. Now, if mythology rings true, everything that King Midas touched turned to solid gold. I'm not going to tempt fate by trying. We'll come back when there's something for us to use. Midas loved the power at first, and the riches that followed, but when he found his food and drink turned to gold in his hand, he began to see his gift as a cursed bane. He prayed to Dionysus to be delivered from starvation and was told by the god to wash in the river Pactolus, along with anything that had changed to reverse the effects. Alright, so we've checked uh, the left path, the middle path, so if there's only one left. Alright, so we've got a path going up and a path below. Gonna stay on the level before we... Uh, ascend or descend. To Midas's dismay, the river sands turned into gold, and according to Aristotle, Midas eventually died of starvation. The curse never lifted, despite his numerous prayers. Lovely, some magnum clips. Restock the ones that I burned earlier. So we can see from this ground floor, this is a massive level with very, very large structures. This was obviously a palace of tremendous opulence when it was uh, in its heyday. Nice for the population of uh, lions and apes surviving down here. Alright, great. We haven't had some bats for a while. Alright, lovely. Total dead end though. Something tells me we'll be traversing... Ah, uh, the structure's above, though. Thought I heard another bat. Alright. Those surfaces there are too sloped for Lara to climb, so we can't reach them from down here. There's only one way to go. Up the stairs. Alright, another massive room. And clearly another zoo. Excellent. Again, beautiful sense of scale. 
and some new curiosities. These locked doors, and there's a couple of them throughout. If we look closely, we can see that these, these symbols above the door. One is a upsilon, or ypsilon in Greek accent, and the other are omegas. That pattern might come in handy a bit later. We can't climb up on this side because it's too tall and there's a gate there blocking our way up to the main podium. So we'll have to take the long way around. Hopefully with a little more grace than that. <laughs> Alright. Just made it on there. Five switches. Five symbols on each door. Before we give them a tackle, let's just check what's down here. Okay, so it just means next time we need to get up here, we can do that very quickly. So let's begin with the door we found, so we know that there's one on the left and everything else in the same configuration. Considering the shape of the letters, the first one kind of looks like it's pointing up and the rest omega pointing down or maybe the end. Either way. Alright, so if our deduction is correct, and it is not. So it means that it is the other way around. That's better. Let's head down. like some kind of test. Let's hope we're not roasted alive. Look, there are absolutely way more grateful <laughs> graceful ways of doing that, um, but you'll forgive me, right? Okay, let's see what we got there. It's a lead bar. Now, famously in alchemy, it is impossible to turn lead to gold. However, according to the Greek myth, King Midas was able to turn all objects to gold just by touching them. And we did see a severed hand. So... Let's test if there's any truth to the myth.
We also now know that this Y looking symbol is down and the Omegas are up. Let's check the next door. Okay, they've obscured the first one. But we know then that it's up, down, down, up for the last four. So now we've just got to do either up or down, depending on... Okay, yes it is up. <laughs> Lovely. Alright, door number two, here we come. Got a giant crumbling pillar in a very large room. Alright, we've got a path up and a path below. Okay. Below looks like there is a block, and a block that looks sneakily like the same uh, stonework that's on that pillar. So this could be the base of the pillar that we move here. Just check the other side. very long staircase that ends in a small opening but there is absolutely nothing we can do from this height there is nowhere to go our only choice is to mess with the foundations of that pillar and see what happens outside. Let's go see what that did from above. <laughs> Alright, so the pillar totally caused the room to crumble and collapse when it was moved. But it also means that we can actually traverse this area. Aha, uh -huh. a little opening in the wall.
That was an accident. <laughs> It looks like this is a giant aqueduct above running across the, the palace. Kind of like almost like a gutter as well. If you look down, that's kind of where we were at the very, very base. We're right on the roof of everything. Now, if we look over here, you can see there's some items down there. Now, that is a secret. I'm not going to grab it just yet because there's stuff I want to explore here and that will put me down on the lower levels. So let's just start our investigation here. Okay, dead end from here. All right, so it looks like the only way to go is down this tunnel. Let's go for a swim. Okay, another collapsed room with some items over there in the corner. Doesn't seem like there's much more we can do in this room. We can see that there are two collapsible tiles at the top there, but it's much, much higher than we can reach. So obviously there's an opportunity to be up that high and fall through it. Alright, I think we've exhausted everything we can find here. I'm gonna just grab the secret... And it is pretty high up, so I'm probably gonna lose a bit of health here. Oh, no. Very good. And there is a whole squadron of gorillas down there that are just waiting for me to hop over this wall. So let's get out there. Gotta love a shotgun. Let's check out the second floor. That was close. Here another one, and you know what? We're in a tight proximity, so I don't mind using some magnum ammo if I have to. Excellent. I just love the way the magnums, like that dark color look in her holsters. It's very sexy. All right. Um, okay, so we can see that there is a meta pack on the other side, and it looks like we could probably shimmy across. So let's give that a go. This second door has been uh, pretty dizzying so far. That shadow that you also see beneath Lara, 
uh, is much improved from the very, very original game. It used to basically be a black dot. That uh, very impressive shadow you see there is uh, courtesy of the Croft engine, which I can't speak more highly about. I don't like wasting magnums on bats, especially ones that die with one bullet. All right. So it looks like there is a path across. So I am going to equip my magnums because I'm feeling a little risky. More collapsed tunnels. We're getting pretty damned high as well. We're probably above the third floor right now. Okay, interesting. So you see the two tile, three tiles that we saw from the other room. We now know what's beneath it, and we kind of now know where we are. Just gonna very carefully get this meta pack. I think I'm good to run the rest of the way. Okay. We're hopping down on the other side. Where is it taking us, I wonder? Interesting. Just want to get a little closer to it. That was the room we started in. And that's that antechamber we talked about. This is just another great example of Core Design's wonderful uh, level design the way that they all kind of circle and circle and entwine it's really really impressive even to this day all right we're lucky that croc had its back to us Now, I know it's hard to see from here, but we're actually on top of that kind of Parthenon-looking place that we went to at the very beginning where we pulled the switch. And the roof yields another lead bar. Very interesting. Oh, and some more friends for us to kill. might get the shotgun out because I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty hard to shoot them from this distance. Go with me on this. Excellent. I think I wounded the other one. Let's return to the room with the levers and explore the other few rooms that are there. Uh, 
so again, you can kind of get, I hope you can sort of get a sense of the lovely way that the level is all interconnected. And when you're climbing for a while, sometimes you lose your bearings and you can't really see it as if you were sort of zoomed out and looking at, at the level as a whole. But it's just so expertly crafted and designed. Okay, so we've got up, up, down, up, down. Excellent. Okay, so we've got a room with a lot of nasty looking spikes there. There's two openings that I can see up above too tall for us to climb and with a pit of spikes right beneath us probably not a great idea let's take the safer route all right we've got another block there let's move it straight away this time That's a very unusual sound. Let's see what that did. Interesting. So it's lifted pillars from those devices beneath. Let's get started. One false move, and we will be skewered. <laughs> I see another lead bar. Oh, we're in pretty close quarters. Let's go, our trusty friend, shotgun. Beautiful. All right. Lead bar number three. And let's get down safely. Beautiful. All right, excellent. Now I think that there's one more door left in this room. Down, up, 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 down. I see a lion. <laughs> 
interesting. So there's three slots. We have three lead bars. But the formula up the top says three times gold. It's probably going to unlock that giant door. There's also some stairs up here. Some lovely shotgun shells. I'll never say no to those. All right. I think there's nothing left than for us to go and test if the mythology about King Midas was true or not. So let's head back to the garden and place one of the lead bars on his godly hand. And I'm just going to speed this up for your convenience. Alright, just before we do go to the hand, I want to draw you to your, your attention to secret number three, which is pretty damn well hidden. It's in this room. There is this uh, gate here. So if we look very, very closely, now I didn't expect you to see this, but there is a lever right here. Which has opened this side. Magnum ammos. Yes, the, the, the clanging of those teeth is incessant and annoying. I think we got everything. Okay. Phew. All right. Let's go check out Midas's hand. He certainly has the size of a god. Let's see if he has the power of one. He sure does. Let's, uh, let's turn the other two lead bars into gold and get out of this ancient palace. All right. We can get out of here. And I will just speed this up for your convenience once more. So we can deduce that this elaborate locking contraption was set up by Midas to protect whatever is behind this door. And it was only with Midas' express permission or consent, and indeed by his hand, in this case literally, that anyone could open it and access whatever is behind. So let's see what it was that King Midas kept locked away behind this door. See you guys in the next level.